Let's go to Hunter Biden. He was scheduled to testify. He answered the House Oversight Committee's subpoena request for a closed door deposition, saying he would only appear for a public hearing before them. Oversight Chair James Comer snapped back on Fox News saying this. He will have a public hearing after we do the deposition. This is the way credible investigations are conducted. And Hunter, Hunter Biden is not above the law. Just because he's gotten away with uh, criminal activity by the DOJ, the FBI, the IRS, the National Archives, doesn't mean he's going to be treated that way by the House Oversight Committee. Apparently, the White House is not happy about Hunter and his lawyers making a scene about responding to the House subpoena. Do you think the president can get Hunter to attend the closed door session? Well, I don't think it's up to the president. Uh, I think it's up to the House Oversight Committee, as as was just mentioned um, by uh, Congressman uh, Comer, and that's exactly what should happen. We're going to done. This needs to be done in a credible manner, in a credible way, and in, in a way that our judicial system works. And and he will have to testify in the way that the House Oversight Committee demands. Okay, the, the Daily Caller reports that Monday Oakland California City Council meeting turned wild when amendments were proposed that would condemn Hamas. I want you to listen to the responses from the local residents. To hear them complain about Hamas violence is like listening to a wife beater complain when his wife finally stands up and fights back. Question, did anyone else notice that those who oppose this resolution are old white supremacists? There's not been beheadings of babies and rapings. Israel murdered their own people on October 7th. All right. Instead of condemning Hamas, the city council created a resolution to call for a ceasefire three days after Israel began a ceasefire. So, Dave, how do these people buy into Hamas lies and repeat them saying Israel killed its own people? I have absolutely no idea. I don't know how anybody can support a known terrorist organization that is committing horrific terrorist acts. It is unbelievable to me the, the, the deception that these people have brought themselves under. I don't understand it. It makes absolutely no sense at all. It does not. New York Post now is reporting over 2,500 police officers have left the force this year, according to pension data. In addition, over 1,000 more quit before reaching the 20-year pension line. Inhumane amounts of forced overtime is the biggest reason they're giving. New York is already facing greater crime. Can it get worse as a result of this? Well, it can and it likely will. The number of police officers in New York City are the lowest since the 90s. And when you don't support the, the police officers the way they should, then what happens is they leave. The next five academy classes for New York City police have been canceled because they can't find people to fill it. This is a real crime, a, a real problem of crime rising, and the New York City Police Department is in real trouble. I encourage you to find out more about Intercessors for America and their ministry to Washington and our nation. Just visit ifapray.org. It's well worth your time. Mike? Greg, the Department of Justice released a redacted search warrant for Donald Trump's Twitter account from special counsel Jack Smith Monday, revealing it sought information on users that interacted with the former president's account. The Post Millennial reports Twitter was required to disclose all content, records, and other information relating to communications sent from or received by Trump's account from October of 2020 to January of 2021. The warrant also included all lists of Twitter users who have favorited or tweeted tweets posted by the account, as well as all tweets that included the username associated with the account. The search warrant also sought posts like made, liked, or retweeted by Trump, direct messages sent and received by the former president and other account data. A judge has ordered the FBI to release information stored on the personal laptop of Democrat staffer Seth Rich. You may recall Rich was shot and killed not far from the U.S. Capitol in 2016 during what may have been an attempted robbery. A suspect or suspects were never identified. This week, a Texas judge ordered the FBI to turn over the information to Brian Huddleston and his attorney. Huddleston first requested to see what was on Rich's laptop in September of 2017 under the Freedom of Information Act. According 
to Newsweek. Huddleston was investigating Rich's potential role in the DNC email leaks relating to the Russian hacker involvement with the Trump campaign. Originally, the FBI told Huddleston it did not have the requested material, but it turned out the FBI did have thousands of pages of relevant material. Uh, court first ordered the release of Rich's information in September of last year, but the FBI fought to withhold some of the materials under the FOIA exemptions. Now, a year after the original ruling, Texas judge rejected FBI arguments it used to withhold that information. Greg. There's a phone number on the screen right now that you can call, 877-281-6297. A licensed prayer minister is ready to pray with you concerning anything that's going on, the upcoming holidays, what you saw in the news today, uh, people that you love that are in the path of some of these storms. So, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to hear the news truthfully, unfiltered, uncensored. We thank you for that. Now give us the strength to go about and change our world for the better. One person at a time. In your name we pray.